Good morning. Welcome to Facebook. I'm Dr. Mary Neal. First of all, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. And God, I bless your holy name. Father, thank you for this day that you have made. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us last night and allowing us to see another day. Thank you, Father, for your eyes going to and fro in the earth, looking for someone to bless. And Lord, I ask you to stop by and bless each and every one of us today. God, I thank you for you because all good things come from above. I thank you for your short Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, O oh God, for loving us so much that you sent him, O oh God. You sent him to die for the sins of this whole world. And you raised him for our justification. God, thank you because of the first Adam, we were separated from you. We was born ungodly. But thank you, Father, because of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. We can be made righteous according to your word. When we believe on you and we believe that you sent your son into this world and raised him from the dead. God, thank you, O oh God, for your free gift, O oh God, to all mankind. So, God, I lift up all mankind today. I ask you to move by your spirit, O oh God. Have mercy on this entire world, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Move in every place, O oh God. God, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive. God, help us to live righteous before you, O oh God, holy before you. Let us live in peace with everything that abide in us, because your word says, Without peace, no man would see the Lord. So God, give us peace that surpasses our own understanding. And God, help us to pray for all mankind, because that's what you command us to do. So God, we say today, nevertheless, not our will, but your will be done. And God, I know your will is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Your will is, O oh God, that we do not do evil for evil, because Yeshua said, judgment is mine, says the Lord. So God, help us to do things according to your will. Help us to stand with your word, O oh God. Even when no one else want to stand, God, help us to stand. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me. I pray that you are blessed today, blessed in your going in, blessed in your coming out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's see if I can try to get some music going here today. I've been having problems. Holy Ghost, right Holy here. Ghost, he's all over me.
Just in case we have anyone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by faith if we believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we are justified by our faith. Then the Bible teaches us, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved out of the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call <clears throat> upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and he that confesses and, oh gosh, uh, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, as we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us for our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. How many of us know the word is true? Good morning, Sister Denine. Denine. Uh, and, oh, I can't see that. Good morning, everyone. How are you? I hope each and every one is having a blessed day. Hallelujah. We are continuing with our teaching for over a month now. We welcome all as one in the Messiah Christ, as mentioned in John chapter 17 and Galatians 3, 28. And these chapters deal with how we are to become one. And we really need to continue to pray for this world today that we will become one in Yeshua the Messiah, that we will become one in Christ Jesus. All this fighting is going on right now because we are not unified in the body of Christ. God did not send Yeshua to die for a group. He sent Yeshua Jesus to die for the sins of the whole world. And everyone that are in Yeshua, that's Jesus the Christ, son of the living God, everyone that's in him are to be one. 
As we said before, testing time. That mean man is being tried today. There's a shaking going on again. And anything that can be shaken is going to fall. The only thing that's going to continue to stand with this shaking going on is those that will not be shaken from their faith, shaken from the word of God, shaken from doing things according to God's will. So that's why I love the prayer that Yahshua Jesus prayed. Nevertheless, and not my will, but your will be done. How many of us are praying for God's will to be done with this war going on? We're just, are we just leaning to one side? Or are we praying, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done? And again, God's will is that all humanity be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That tells us Many people can be saved, but that does not mean they have came to the knowledge of the truth, which would make man free from all of this uh, hatred and all of this killing and malice and strife and envy and jealousy. None of that is of God. Those things is of Satan. But because of God's word, things will happen. But God give every man and woman and child freedom to choose. Freedom to choose from the foundation of the world. That's why it's so important that people go back to the foundation. How things began. Why they happened the way they did. Because everything was written for our learning. That we will not be unlearned when it comes to things like happening today. So many of us, we think that, you know, things are happening because they just happen. Nope. Of God's word. Although God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does God tempt anyone. But because of what is written down, settled in heaven, things will come to pass. That does not mean we need to do evil. It's our choices. Whether we do good or do evil. That's why he said, I set before you this day blessings and a curse. You choose. So every one of us choose the way we live, although we can teach people the right way, although we can lead people the wrong way, it all is going to boil down to each individual choice. I can teach people but I'm not going to hell for anyone. You can teach me, but you should not go to hell for me. That's why I tell people, hell is not made for us. It's a choice whether we go to hell or we go to heaven and enter into the gates. And when I say go to heaven according to God's word, many can go to heaven, but that does not mean they're going to stay there because there are layers of heaven. Because we can be in Yeshua the Messiah to study the word. The truth is in God's word. We can be in Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, and make it to a heaven. But that does not mean we'll make it through the gates. And if anyone say that's not true, just go to the book of Revelation. And we'll see who will not enter into the gates. Although we know we can go to heaven a heaven, because Paul even spoke of what? The third heaven. So yeah, we can go to a heaven and stand before Yeshua the Messiah and be cast back down. That's why the Bible said, he that is exalted into the heaven shall be what? Cast back down to hell. Many people can't understand that. Many, many, many people do not believe that. Many people never read that. So they think, just because I'm a child of God, I'm going to enter into those gates. But how many of us know we are not to stay children of God? We are to be sons and daughters of God. That means we are to be uh, mature. Because children go what? To and fro, in and out. We are to come to a place where we are not going in and out of faith, in and out of the word of God, in and out of church. We need to be firm. We need to what? 
stand still, which means it's good to go to church. I encourage anybody that's unchurched, go to church. But make sure church is in you because church will not lead anybody through the gates. Many devils are right in church. But there are also many righteous and holy people in the church that are concerned about our souls. But if we're in a church that's not concerned about our souls, not teaching people what God said about sin, not teaching people what love really is, this is the love of God that we keep his commandment. This is the love of God that we do not do evil to one another. Many of us just think the love of God is a feeling, right? But we know the love of God is in action. How do we know? God showed his love toward us by sending his son to die for us. That's why the Bible says, for God so loved the world, everyone. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you came from. Doesn't matter your zip code. God sent Yeshua Jesus, which is the son of the living God, to die for all mankind. But also knowing that all mankind will not believe. Also knowing all mankind will not receive. Also knowing all mankind will not obey. But that's the love of God. Which means we can teach the word of God. But also know all mankind is not going to, to receive it. They will reject it. Because people are afraid of the truth. That's why the Bible said they would not come to the light, that their sin would be reproved. And many of us, we will not go to the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and says, Lord, is this my will or is this your will? Is this according to how I should live or is this according to how Satan want me to live? The word of God is true. And the truth is in Yeshua, the Messiah. So again, we welcome all as one in the Messiah Christ, as mentioned in John 17 and Galatians 3, 28. If I be lifted up, those who follow me know we've been using this for over a month now. Because if we're not lifting up Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, it's time. Because many of us lift up ourselves, but we're not doing it God's way. The, uh, Yeshua says, no man cometh unto me except the Father draws him, number one. And then he said, if someone come unto me, in no wise will I cast him out. So, a person can be in Yeshua the Messiah and not realize the devil is after you. Because you say you believe, does that mean you follow? Because you say you believe? Does that mean you are obeying? No, obedient is better than sacrifice. Obedient is better than going to church. Obedient is better than paying your tithe. Obedient, because if you obey, you're going to do what God commands us to do. Hallelujah. If I be lifted up, if who be lifted up? If I, Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of God, be lift up. So must the Son of Man be lift up. And these are some things we'll cover as we go forward. So must the Son of Man be lift up. In other words, this is what we should do. It doesn't mean what this is what everyone's going to do. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know something. When I'm lifted up from the earth, you say, the Son of Man has to be lift up. God did it. Your evident proof is in the Word of God. Yeshua Jesus' name is called the Word of God. And as we said, we were going through my book, and I'm using a lot of information that might not be under these titles, but we stopped off with the one God sent. God sent Yeshua, Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah. God did not show Yeshua, Yeshua Jesus, to all the people. God sanctified Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. 
God glorified Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. God glorified his name when a voice came from heaven. God honored Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. God honored those who serve Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. God anointed Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. In case anybody following me, you wonder why I use Yeshua. That's for short. Yeshua is the original Jesus, the Messiah. Because Yeshua has part of Yahweh, God the Father name. Remember Yeshua says, I mean the word of God says, my name shall be in him. The same way we are called Christian, we say Christian, but it Christian, H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, that means to be a follower of Christ. That's why King Agrippa says you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That means you almost persuaded me to follow. How many of us are almost persuaded or are we persuaded? I'm not almost persuaded to follow Yeshua, the Messiah. I have been persuaded many, many, many years ago because I know it's not enough to just be in Yeshua and not follow Yeshua. I know it's not enough to be in Yeshua and feel like I do not need to obey Yeshua. I know that it is God that loves me. It is God that sent his son. It is God that never too far away from me, but only when I'm in his son, Yeshua the Messiah. This I know. I do not need anyone to tell me how much God loves me because God have proved how much he loves me. I do not need to tell anyone to tell me how much Yeshua Jesus loves me. I know he loves me. I know I can bring my cares unto him. It doesn't matter what day, what time or night it is. I know if I go to him in no way he's going to cast me out when I am obeying him. I also know if I'm not obeying him, there will come a time in my life where he will not even hear my prayers. He will not even see my tears. I know that. Why? Because it's in the word of God. He said to Jeremiah, I'm thinking I haven't read it for a long time. Don't even pray for them. Don't even cry for them. I will not even see your tears. So I know he loves us when we are followers of him. I know God loves us because we went through that scripture not long ago. I know God loves me just because I love his son. That I know. If I do not love his son, I do not even know his son. If I do not love the word of God, how can I love Yeshua the Messiah when he is the word of God? Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. Not my will, but your will be done. Where can we find the information? Your evidence, your proof is in the word of God. That was the Rosh HaKosh. Hallelujah. Yeshua, Yeshua Jesus' name is called the word of God. Revelation 1930, 13. I did quote this on last week, but I'm keeping it here as long as the spirit tells me because some of us do not know. He's called the word of God. That's why he came in the volume from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Some of us read Genesis and, and the beginning, and maybe that's it, and we go to the book of Matthew. But how can we get to know him if we're not studying the word of God from Genesis through Revelation? The book of Revelation just summarized the beginning. And that's why it's so important 
to study the Word of God. Those of us especially who teach the Word of God, who want to live for God, who want to uh, who want to be good examples, we need to study. Show ourselves approved, workmen that need is not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In order to do that, we need to know the word from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Someone may say, I can't read the Bible. I don't understand the thing I, I'm trying to read. Neither did I. But guess what? Only thing we have to do is ask, Lord, teach us. Your word. See, the Bible says they all shall be taught of God. That's what the word does. The word of God teaches us. That's why the Bible says you don't need anyone to teach you. But the same anointing that taught you shall continue to teach you. In other words, don't think because the anointing taught you, it does not need to continue to teach you because we don't know everything. So that's in the first John, I think first John or second John. That same anointing. In other words, God anointed Yahshua. And then God anointed us. That's the anointing. That's why they would say Christ means the anointed one. But we are to be the anointed one as well. The same love that God has for his son, he still does. He has that same love for us. But are we walking in that love? Or are we using that love for an excuse not to change? We're to use God's love as to change our lifestyle. God, you loved me so much that you sent your son to die and suffered for me that I would not has to I would not have to continue to live the way I was living. God, you love me so much that you don't want me to follow Satan. You want me to follow your son. God, you love me so much as you was there for your son, you are here for me too. How many of us know that? That's why Yeshua said, my father loves you. Because you love me. Hallelujah. Again, Yeshua is called the word of God. Revelation 19, 13. He was wearing a robe that had been soaked in blood. And the name by which he is called is the word of God. Well, we know Yahshua was called many things. He called the word of God. He called the son of God. He called the Messiah. He called Christ. Uh, so he called Lord. He called by many names. But my Bible said the word by which he is called is the word of God. Remember John, who bore witness to the word of God and that means additional to something. He didn't just bear witness to the word of God. It says, and to the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah, which means Jesus the Christ, but notice as much as he saw. That means he bore witness to the word of God, and to Yahshua, which is Jesus, as much as he saw. Well, think about that. How can we bear witness to something we have not seen? Many times we are not bearing witness to the truth of God because we have not seen it. So in order to bear witness to something, we must see something. How can people bear witness to Yahshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ, is truly the son of the living God, when they can't see that he is truly the son of God? So John bore witness to as much as what he saw. So we need to see something because if you go to court and you try to testify of something, and, and the lawyer may say, but did you see it? Oh, no, I didn't see it. I just heard about it. Well, if they got to count that as a credible witness when I just heard it, but I didn't see it? No, because you heard it, but you couldn't see it. Many people heard about Yahshua, but they couldn't see it. That's why I love Job. So I heard about thee with the ear. 
He said, but now my eyes, hallelujah, see as thee. See, in order to be a witness to something, we need to see it. Uh, Revelation 2.18, Complete Church Bible. To the angel of the Messianic community in Theratastara, write, Here is the message from the Son of God, who eyes are like a fiery flame, and who feet are like burnished brass. You know, when we read that, when you say his eyes were like a fire and it's flaming, and who feet are like burnished brass. Well, where does that always take me back? To the book of Ezekiel, where they saw the third one who looked like the Son of God, because he was where? In the furnace fire. Hallelujah. Hebrew 4.12. <clears throat> if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Hebrew 4.12, complete Jewish Bible. See, the word of God is alive and not dead. It is at work and is sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts right through to where soul meets spirit and joints meet marrow. And it is quick to judge the inner reflection and attitude of the heart. That's what the word does. It is to what? Judge. That's why sometimes we feel like, you know, we hear something in the spirit say, that's not right. I shouldn't do that. Do you think Satan will ever tell you something is, 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 is wrong? No. If you, if you think the devil going to say, oh, that's not right. You shouldn't do that. Never. Because he wants us to do his work in the earth. Yeshua want us to do his work in the earth. That's why he said, I must work the work of the one that sent me while it is day. When night come, no man to work. What is he saying to us? We must work the work of the one that sent us. When we are dead, we can do nothing. So my job is to lift him up while I'm alive because when I'm dead, I'm done. I can't lift him up anymore. My job is to say what the word of God says because the proof is in the word of God. John 18, 37. So then Pilate said to him, you are a king after all. That's your answer. You said I am a king, the reason I have been born. See, sometimes people think he was just born to die. The reason, there's a reason for everything. The reason we are tried to see if we're going to pass the test. The reason people hate us to see if we're going to hate them back. The reason people turn their back on us to see if we're turn our back on that. There's a reason for everything. So the reason I have been born. See, we are born again for a purpose the same way Yahshua was born for a purpose. The reason I have been born, the reason I have come into the world. See, God sent us into the world for a reason. The reason is Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. I have come into the world is to bear witness to the truth. In other words, I didn't come to bear witness to a lying spirit. I came to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who belongs, that means continuation, it has an S there. Everyone who belongs to the truth, listen to me. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So if I belongs to the truth, I'm listening to the Son of God. Your evident proof is in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, 21, King Shane. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahshua. See, that show us. 
He is the one that came to bring forth truth, as we said before. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Yeshua, the Messiah. Complete Jewish Bible, same verse, Ephesians 4, 21. If you really listen to him and were instructed about him, in other words, we can hear him for ourselves, and then we can be instructed, taught by someone else. So if you really listen to him and were instructed about him, then you learn. What have we learned? That since what is in Yeshua is true. How many of us know Yeshua would never lie? Everything that he said, everything that he taught, everything that he quoted was what? What's the truth? Satan is the one that brings forth lies. Yeshua would never lie to us. Jesus would never lie to us. So since he's never going to lie to me, who should I be asking, uh, is this true or not, Lord? Is this of your word? Because you're not going to lie to me. And But in order for me to know who's speaking to me, I need to get in your word so I can know exactly who's speaking to me. Because somebody else will tell me this is what you said, but you didn't say it. Someone else will tell me this is your way, but it's not your way. Someone will tell me I can live any way I want to and it's okay. But you're not going to lie to me. So I want to know your truth. So get in the word and find the truth. John 10, 27, complete Jewish Bible. My sheep, and I'm using some of these verses. You probably heard it before, but because we are staying with that subject, if I be lifted up, this is why we are go, go through some of these verses. Maybe I covered them a few weeks ago or so forth. 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. How many of us want to hear his voice? I love to hear his voice. Like when I ask him something and he answer me. He doesn't answer me all the time as soon as I say, Lord, what about this? Uh, Lord, is this your way? He doesn't answer me all the time. Sometimes he answer me right away. Sometimes he say wait or whatever. But I guarantee you sooner or later, he will answer. You may hear it in your uh, in your spirit. You may see it in the word, or somebody else just might quote it in your spirit. Said that's what he is saying to me because he also give us what you call confirmation. He confirmed his word. John ten twenty seven again. My sheep, not my lamb. My sheep. Those are my two people. My sheep listen to my voice. I recognize them. They follow me. Well, if we're talk, talking, speaking, praying to him, and he doesn't recognize us, <laughs> we're not following him because he doesn't even recognize the voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I recognize them. In other words, I recognize the one that's listening to me. And he says what? They follow me. That's what a sheep does. Follow the leader. A lamb, go to and fro. That's why he said, be no more children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, where man lay in wait to deceive. John 3, 14. Just as Moses, and we did share this one a couple of weeks ago, I believe last Sunday, I'm not sure, but it go along with the teaching if I be lifted up. Just as Moses lift up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lift up. Just in case someone wasn't following me, when you go back and you study that, he's using this as the way Moses lift up that serpent. Moses lift up that serpent and put it on a pole. Everyone that looked at that pole, it doesn't say they was healed. It says everyone that was bitten, bitten, that means you could feel something because it bit you. Everyone that was bitten were saved. Well, we can lift up the word of God and it might not bite anyone. 
it might not touch anyone. It might go through one ear and come out of the other one. Because the person just, although you lift up that word, that person's heart can be hardened. Their eyes can be in darkness. Their ears can be like death. They're not sharp. That's why the Bible speaks of we need to sharpen our ears. We need to be able to see. And our hearts need to be like flesh. So what happened, although we lift up the word of God, someone is going to reject it. Everybody just not going to receive it because they're not his sheep. They just probably are still babies. They are lambs. John 8, 28, complete Jewish Bible. So Yeshua said, Jesus, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know. Notice that. He didn't say when somebody else lift him up, you will know. No, that's what he said. So Yeshua said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know. Well, many people are lifting him up, but people are not knowing anything. Because they not lifting him up so they can what? Know. So read again. So Yeshua said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know. Notice the word is not believed there. You will know what? You will know that I am who I said I am. And that of myself, I do nothing, but say only what the Father has told me. I'll read that again. So Yeshua said, when you lift up the Son of Man, when you do it, then you will know that I am who I said I am. I am the Son of God. And that of myself, I do nothing, but say only what the Father has taught me. In other words, when we study the Word of God, we can see how God taught Yeshua. How he was trained up from a child with his father. I haven't read it for a while, but I'm thinking I'm almost sure it's in Proverbs chapter 8. If you have not studied that chapter, please do so. Because this is where you're going to see how he was trained up by his father. How many of us know we're to be trained up by Yeshua the Messiah? God sent him to teach us, to train us up. But the words he speak to us are not his word. He teach us is the word of his father. So that's why he said, of myself, I do nothing. But say only. What the Father has taught me, John 6, 45, complete Jewish Bible. Now watch that. It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by Adonai, meaning God the Father. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him, come to me. Read that again. It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by Adonai. We're to be taught by the word of God. Everyone who listens to the Father, which means listen to the Father's word, and learns from him. See, it's not enough to just listen to the word. When we are reading, we are to learn from the word. Comes to me. Because we are to know it is the Father that draws us. To his son. John 12, 32, 34. Complete church Bible. As for me, when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. Now notice he says everyone that listened to the father learned from him because the words he spoke was not his word. It was the word of his father. And so we are to lift him up from the earth so he can draw everyone to himself. The crowd answered, we have learned from the Torah, meaning the law, that the Messiah remains forever. Note it. We have learned from the Torah law. Remember, there are many 
laws. And that's where people get confused and think when Christ died, he came to get rid of 10th commandment. That because Satan blind us there. No, the love of God is that we keep God's commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. So here they are speaking what they learn. We learn from the Torah law that the Messiah remains forever. How is it that you say the son of man, meaning the son of God, has to be lifted up? Who is the son of man? In other words, who is the son of God? Some of us are saying the same thing. Who is this man that we call Yahshua? Or who is this man that we call Jesus? If he Is he really the son of God? Well, everyone learned from God and listen to God's word, they know exactly that's who he is. He is the son of the everlasting God. Acts 17, 30 through 31. And this is the verse we've been sharing for over a month now. But the Lord place it in my spirit to keep quoting it because it go along with what's going on today. In the past, in the past, it's the past. You know, like your past sins are forgiven you. Your old sins are forgiven you. That's it. You do the crime, you do the time. Now, what you do in the future, you need to confess and repent. So in the past, that means back in those days. In the past, that means even now. Because if I wasn't listening yesterday, it's time to start listening today. In the past, God looked. God overlooked such ignorance. In the past, God looked over some stuff. That means he's not doing it anymore. But now, he is commanding all people everywhere to turn to him from their sin. He commanding people in America. He commanding people in Israel. He commanding people in Gaza Strip. He commanding people in China. He commanding people in Russia. He commanding people throughout this whole world. For he, God, has set a day. Who set the day? God did. When he will judge, who? God. Then happen to world and do it Justly. Other words, all judgment was given to the Son of God because he is the Son of God. That in John chapter 5. When he will, let me go back. When he will judge and have the world, God going to judge it through Yahshua the Messiah. When he will judge and have the world and do it justly, not unjust because he's not unjust. By means of a man. That man is the Son of God. Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. By mean of a man whom he has designated and he has given public proof. Your proof is in the word. And given public proof. How? Get out of there. I can't see something in my way on my computer. Let me go down. Thank you, Jesus. That little thing just move wherever it's want to. And he has given public proof of it. By re resurrecting this man from the dead. In other words, God give it, have given us proof. And some people, they look over the proof. God given us proof by resurrecting this man, the man he sent to judge the world. Because when Yeshua first came in the world, he said, I didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. But sometimes we do not keep reading. For he said, all oh, judgment is given unto me because I am the son of God. So God doesn't judge, uh, judge those who are in Yeshua. Yeshua judged those. The Bible said God judged those who are without. In other words, God judged the ungodly. Everyone was born ungodly without God. Those are the ones that God judges. God doesn't judge the one in Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ. Yeshua judged those. That's why the Bible said we would stand at the judgment of the Messiah. So God give us proof. How? By resurrecting this man, Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, his son from the dead. God did 
it. God raised, this is where we continue from the book. God raised Yeshua the Messiah. This Jesus, that's King James, because that's what's in the book, King James uh, 231 through 33. This Jesus has God raised up. Whereof we are witnesses. No, we all are witnesses. Going, you can't witness to what you can't see. So they saw God raised up Yeshua, Jesus, from the dead. And that's why they said, we all are witnesses because we all saw it. A uh, reading Acts 31, 33 now, not in the book, a uh, complete Jewish Bible because I couldn't put it in there. I would have to pay for it. Uh, Acts 2, 31 through 33. He was speaking, he who, David. He was speaking in advance about the resurrection of the Messiah. Remember, God showed proof by resurrecting Yahshua from the dead. That's who that man is. And so here, this is David speaking. He was speaking in advance about the resurrection of the Messiah that tell you all the way back in David days. Where do you find David? In the book of Kings, in the book of Chronicles. But David spoke these things. And many times, when David, because David was a prophet, many times people thought David was speaking of himself but he was still speaking about, about, about Yeshua the Messiah. It said, he was speaking in advance about the resurrection of the Messiah, that it was he, that means Yeshua, Jesus, who was not abandoned in Shiloh, meaning hell, and who flesh did not see decay. Because we know David did see decay. Yeshua did not. He was only in the grave for three, uh, three days. God raised him on the third day. God raised up this Yeshua, and we are all witness of it. Who did God raise? God raised up this Yeshua. God raised up this Jesus, his son, and we are all witnesses of it. Can we be witness of that? That God raised up his son, not himself? That God raised up this Yeshua, that God raised up this Jesus, and we saw this Yeshua, and we saw this Jesus, and we are witness how God raised him up on the third day from the dead. Can we witness to that? Or are we witnessing to something else that's not in the book? 33. Moreover. He has been exalted. Who been exalted? Yeshua Jesus. Where was he exalted to? He has been exalted to the right hand of God. Has received. Who received? Yeshua Jesus. Has received from the Father. Notice. Yeshua received this from his Father. Has received from the Father what he promised. Because God promised something. And Yahshua received from the Father what he promised. God promised us something. Sometimes we receive what God promised. Sometimes we never receive what God promised because we do not believe the promise or we are disobeying so we cannot get the promise. Hallelujah. Moreover, he has been exalted to the right hand of God, has received from the Father what he promised. What? Namely, Notice, Yeshua Jesus received the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost. So he received that from his Father. We're to receive that from him. Who? From his Father. Which means we receive the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost through Yeshua the Messiah. That's why when they taught the word of Yeshua Jesus, that's when the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost came upon them because they received the word. Yeshua received the word from God. And this is how he received the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost. That's why when you go to Acts chapter 10, it speaks of how God anointed Yeshua from Nazareth with the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost and with power. Hallelujah. Let me finish that verse. Moreover, he has been exalted to the right hand of God, has received from the Father what he promised. Namely, 
the Rush Hall Coast, Holy Ghost, and has poured out this gift. Well, what happened, many times people read at chapter 2 a few verses, but they don't read the whole chapter. And then they do not go to other chapters to see what they received and how they received it. So again, and has poured out this gift, that means what they was hearing, which you are both, both mean two or something, someone or something, which you are both seeing, that means they saw something, and hearing, they heard something. For David did not ascend into heaven. In other words, David is speaking of this. David did not go to heaven. Yeshua went back to heaven. Now it said, be it known unto you all. And to all the people of Israel. Well, remember, once we're in Christ, there is no more Jew, no more Gentile, no more bun, no more free, no more male, female. You all one in Yahshua the Messiah. That means all that stuff should go away. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahshua, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In other words, they crucified the Son of God, but God raised him from the dead. Even by him, by Yeshua, does this man stand here before you whole. That's Acts 4, 9 through 11, where you go back to Acts chapter 3. That's where you see the man was lame. And Peter said, uh, silver and gold, we have none, but such as we have, we give unto you. In the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ, arise and walk. So that's where this picks up. That's why it's not good enough to just read Acts chapter 2. We need to study Acts chapter 2 all the way through Acts uh, chapter 4, 4, 9, 11. If we are being examined today about a good deed done for a disabled person, showing you it, taking you back to Act 3. If you want to know how he was restored to health, then let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel that it is in the name of the Messiah Yeshua from Nazareth, whom you had executed on a state as a criminal, but whom God has raised from the dead, that this man stand before you perfectly healed. That's why they said flesh and uh, silver and gold, we have none, but such as we have, we give unto you in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, in the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. That's why the Bible said there is no other name given unto man under heaven whereby we must be saved but by the name of Yeshua the Messiah which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said whom you had executed on the state as a criminal but whom God has raised from the dead that this man stand before you perfectly healed. So that word perfectly mean complete. That's why people say, oh, nobody can be perfect because they do not understand. Perfect in God's word does not mean you can't do anything wrong. Perfect means to be mature, to be complete. That's why David had a perfect heart. He had a heart after God. Although he sinned against God, but he repented. He didn't continue to do it. So his heart was still perfect toward God. So we can have a perfect heart, mature Mature in Christ. Well, we don't just want to go out there and practice sin. We don't want to just live any way because we think we're going to get away with it. We want to serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord through obedience. Hallelujah. Obedience is what? Better than sacrifice. This Yeshua, this Jesus, is the stone rejected because he went to his own. His own received him not, but to them that received him, he gave them power. To become the sons of God, even those who believed on his name. It said, This Yeshua is the stone rejected by your builder, which has become the cornerstone. And Jesus answering said unto them, back in the book, They that are whole 
need not a physician, but they that are sick. Well, we need to study the whole chapter to understand it. Luke 5, 31, that was King James. Now I'm going to read from the complete Jewish Bible, and we'll close on these verses, 31 through 32. Ah, it was Yeshua who answered. It was Jesus. It was Yeshua who answered them. The one who need a doctor aren't the healthiest, but the sick. Well, common sense tell us that, right? So many times we think of sickness as a, just as a physical illness. But sin is a sickness. Sin is an illness. That's why, you know, many times people do evil, they say uh, they have a mental problem. But that's not always true. The devil is a lie. I always say a mental devil. Because people do evil and try to hide from doing evil. You know it's not mental it is of the devil. When especially a person have told you he hearing voices and we know he's not hearing or uh, she not hearing the voice of the Lord because the Lord can be tempted with evil. And that's why the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua the Messiah had the mind of his father and that was to obey his father, to do the father will. So we are to have that same mind to obey God and do the will of our father. So it said, it was Yeshua who answered them, the one who need a doctor aren't the healthiest, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous. Why? Because if you're righteous, you already repent. That's why the Bible said the laws is not for a righteous man, but for sinners, uh, murderers, and call out all those things that the law is for to teach us that we should not do those things. That's in First Timothy, I'm thinking, or I'm almost sure, First Timothy chapter 1. So they say the law is not for us. But the Bible said it's not for a righteous man because the righteous man is keeping them. That's why it's not for them. It's for the lawless, those who do not have it. It's for murderers. So my mothers and fathers is for haters, it's for liars, it's for sinners. And so all of this teaches us that's who it's for. So as long as I'm doing the will of God, I'm in right standing with God. I don't need them to teach me because I already have them. So that's why he said, I have not come to call the righteous, but rather to call sinners. See, sinners and ungodly are two groups of people. Ungodly are those who are without God. Sinners are those who are in Christ, but they're sinning against God. He said, but rather to call sinners to turn to God. Because many times sinners have turned away from God. So they are sick. They need to turn back to God from what? From their sin. If we do not believe that Yeshua the Messiah is the Son of God, we are sinning against God. So we need to turn back to God because that is a sin unto death. I need to read this one and then we're going to close because it go along with this. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 1, 9 and 10. Say they themselves... Keep telling us. See, it's not enough to just tell someone something one time. Sometimes we need to keep telling them. Why? Because sometimes we tell a person something, they're not really listening. It goes through one ear right out of the other one. And then sometimes we plant a seed. Satan come along and just dig the seed up. So we need to keep. Notice what it says. Say so they themselves keep telling us about the welcome we receive from you and how you turn to God from idols. Do you know people can be idols? We are serving people, but we are not serving God. So we need to turn back to God from idols. How do we know we when we have created idols? Some people say, well, I'm not going to church Sunday because pastor is not there and I don't want to hear the other people preach. Now that pastor has become your idol. You're not concerned about the word of God. You're concerned about the man or the woman. So they become your idol. They become your idol when God tells you one thing and they tell you something else and you obey the idol over God. They became your idols. So it's time to turn from those idols that take you away from God and serve the true and living God. Hallelujah. It says, since they themselves keep telling us about the welcome... 
uh, the welcome we receive from you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the true God, the one who is alive. Well, we know God is alive. God never died. God cannot die. God is from everlasting to everlasting. But, but notice that we do not go to the next verse. We're missing we're to turn from those idols to serve the one true God who is alive. But notice what verse 10 says. And to wait. Sometimes we don't want to wait. We like popcorn. We put it in the oven. We don't want to wait. If it's taking three minutes, we thought it was one, we get upset. And to wait for his son, Yeshua, Jesus, whom he raised, whom God raised from the dead, to appear from heaven and rescue us from the impending theory of God's judgment. See, some of us are still waiting whether we believe it or not. We think we are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Just because we believe for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth continue to in him, not out of him, should not perish, not shall not perish, have everlasting life. And sometimes we feel like because I'm in Christ, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I don't need nothing else. No, that's for the world, people. It's for God so love the world. That wasn't just, that wasn't even for believers at that time. But God so loved the world. He's speaking of everyone throughout the whole world. That he gave, not he came, that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever continue to believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, that teaches us we can be in him, but that doesn't mean we continue to believe in him that we can have eternal life. Because the Bible teaches us what eternal life really is. So it says, and to wait for who? His son, God's son. Yeah, sure. Whom he, he who, God, whom he raised from the dead to appear from heaven. Well, if a person is not in Christ, they're waiting. <laughs> so he can come from heaven into their hearts and rescue us from the impenitent fury. Because God get angry when we do not believe that he sent his son. God get angry when we do not believe that he raised his son. God get angry when we do not believe that Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, is his son. He get angry. That's why he want, to want Jesus to rescue us from that. So he won't be angry that he would be what? Well pleased to serve the true God, the one who is alive. That's where we're going to stop today. To serve the one true God. Because there are gods, many. Some people don't know that. Why? Because they don't study the word of God. It's in Corinthian. There are so-called gods, many. Whether in heaven or in earth. But there is one true God. Do you know Moses was called a god? Do you know many people was called Lord? Abraham was called Lord. Jacob was called Lord. Esau was called Lord. There was many Lord. That's why I said so-called Lord. Whether in heaven or in earth. But there's one true Lord whom God made both Messiah and Christ. Whom God made both what? Lord and Messiah. So God made Yeshua both Lord and Messiah, both Lord and Christ. That's why David said, my Lord said unto my Lord. That means God said unto Yeshua, sit here on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. And right now, some of us is just a footstool for his feet. Like his feet just resting on us. Why? Because we did not continue in our faith. We allowed some lying spirit to take away what was actually written down in Scripture. Again, where's your proof? Where's your evidence? In the Word of God. Your proof. 
your evidence are in the word of God. Other words, if God said, rest on it. If he did not say it, get rid of it. Because that unbelief can take us right to hell, no matter what we believe. But we need to move from believing to knowing. That's why Yeshua said, do you now believe? Those disciples said, now we are sure. We are sure. How many of us are sure that Yeshua Jesus is truly the son of the living God? If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. So it's time to lift him up. But make sure what we are lifting up is true according to the word of God. Because again, your proof, your evidence is in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me. If we have anybody out there that has not confessed Yeshua Jesus to be the son of God, we are to be like Simon Peter. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. It was my Father in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we have not confessed Yeshua. Confess him. Because you're justified by the words you speak. And you're condemned by the words you speak. That's why those disciples said, so have we believed, so have we spoken. We are witnesses that God raised them from the dead. Hallelujah. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, his son from the dead, and out of my heart, I am to continue to believe unto righteousness. Then the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if we have not been justified by our faith. We are to be justified the same way our father Abraham was justified. Abraham believed on God and it was credit to his account for righteousness. But the Bible said he had to put work with his faith before he was made perfect. So we are to have that same faith if we believe on God and believe that God raised Yeshua, his son, from the dead. That's what justifies us. But once we're justified, we are only in a race. And we're to run that race with patience, forget about those things that are behind us, and press forward for the high calling in Yeshua the Messiah. That's why there are processes in the Bible. It tells us to confess that which we believe. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then Mark 16, 16 said, He that believeth, he that continue to believe, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned, meaning condemned. And 1 John 1 and 9 said, If, it's up to us to confess. If we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28 says, He that confesses and forsake his sin, meaning repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. How many of us know that's in the word of God? It's nothing in the word of God that all your sin, past, present, and future sins are forgiven. That's a lie from the pits of hell. If you can find it, I'm teachable. Show it to me. The Bible says you have forgotten that you was purged from your old sin. You have forgotten. That means your past sin. When we confess, if we agree with God that sin is sin and turn away from it, God doesn't hold our past against us. But how can I say all my sins are forgiven me when I'm living in sin? Impossible. How can I say all my sins are forgiven me past, present, and future when I do not believe the record that God gave of his son? That is a sin unto death. That's why the Bible says that's a sin 
not unto death, and there's a sin unto death that I say do not even pray for. And people praying for dead people's sin, they wasting their time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to see each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me. The blessing of the Lord rest up on you today. If you're free, join us tomorrow night at 10 o'clock East, nope, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock Central Time. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Love you with the love of Yeshua, the Messiah. Hallelujah. Father, I come once again in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, your holy son of Israel. God, I thank you for you because all things came from you. In the beginning was God. And God, we thank you. Knowing in the beginning, Yeshua was there with you from the foundation of the world. You created everything through him, by him, and for him. God, I thank you for you, number one. And I thank you for Yeshua the Messiah because your word says, He that honored the Father should honor the Son. And he that dishonored the Son is dishonoring the Father that sent him. God, I give you both honor according to your word. And I bless your holy name. God, bless each and every person out there today. God, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. God, continue to bless this world as a whole, Father. Have mercy, O oh God, upon each and every one of us, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Have mercy, O oh God, in Israel where the bombs are still being fired at them. But Lord, don't look over. God, so oh God. Have mercy, O oh God, because God, we know you have people throughout this world and even though in your word you said those who wasn't called your people shall be called your people. And we know everyone in Yeshua the Messiah, everyone that believed that Yeshua the Messiah is your son, they are your people. So God, just protect those children over there. Protect those late women's over there. Protect those men's over there, God. Whoever is not a part of that evil, because God, you're not of evil. So, God, we pray that your will be done, Father. Let it not be man's will to do those evil things, so God, because it's definite not your will. So, God, remove the evil spirit out of man's heart because we know Satan is at work because he only have a little while. But, Father, your word also says with the temptation, you will make a way for us to escape. So God, let us escape from the evil, knowing evil is of Satan, but good is of you. So God, nevertheless, your will be done throughout this world as a whole. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining me. Each and every one of you have a blessed day. Love you with the love of Yeshua the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah.